to undo all of that requires jumping into the growth mindset and doing the work to stay in a growth mindset so your brain can rewire itself and get out of that judgment and fear and failure and all those negative hardwired emotions. Fixing other things and having that growth mindset does eliminate some of these, I mean, obviously they're mental and, and character defects that, that we have. Without even trying to fix that specific one, you fix others like yourself, like your mental health and, and physical health and so on. Suddenly you do start worrying a lot less about what others think. Okay, what's up, Jeremy Torchinski? What's up, Eric? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm doing well as well. Excited for this podcast. I know everyone just seems to, to be the one. Yeah, well, I'm like back on the inspiration to recording podcasts because I realized that I want to talk more about, you know, different coaching topics mm -hmm. on the podcast. Yeah, for sure. It's just going to be so educational. And again, this is all about self-awareness. Everything's about self-awareness that we're talking about. Previous podcasts, emotional intelligence and self-awareness. This one is self-awareness. So just by listening to the podcast, you're automatically becoming more self-aware. And when you okay. become more self-aware, you're just becoming better. And we talk about it all the time. Like, a, that's the difference with Zero Doubt Club versus other places to get a, a workout um, or nutrition coaching, et cetera, that, that, that it is the mind. It is all about mindset. Uh, especially if you want sustenance in life, right? So if you want it to sustain this time, right? Not just a diet for a few months and, and lose it or work out for a few months and lose it. The, the point is, how do you get your mind to shift from, you know, again, which we're going to talk about from one type of mindset to the mindset that you really so you're teasing what we're talking about. Or we're going to tease Talk what about we're it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So every podcast is 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 especially these new ones, and I agree with you, obviously. And I'm just as excited as you because that's that's always the the difference between non results and results and. I've just been the victim of, uh, of the wrong mindset for such a long time and finally fell into the right mindset with the right coaching and with the right uh, dots connecting that, that never connected before. And I mean, we all know uh, it internally, right? We know what, what we're doing is right or wrong, uh, but we just keep doing it. We fall into this trap and that's what why I'm so excited about this new, I shouldn't say new, but, but for the immediate next 10, 12 podcasts, et cetera, where we focus on life coaching themes and, and address, you know, like our personal experiences in it and clients experiences in it and, and make it super relatable uh, for two reasons. One is, uh, a awareness for potential clients and and so on but b uh for our existing clients this is going to be great material to to read and then come talk to us about or to to listen watch read <laughs> and then come talk to us uh about with maybe more specific so it just becomes more concise gives them a chance to think about it um anyway i'm excited about that what else are you excited about lately, Jeremy? I'm, I'm honestly excited for the entire month. Um, I set some goals and there's just something to your excitement level when you set goals, like specific goals that you're striving for that you know you want. Exactly. And it's running because my whole life I've never been a runner, fixed mindset. Just strength train. I don't need cardio. 
fixed mindset. We, we ran eight miles on Christmas yeah. on Christmas Day. So you are a run. Well, I mean, you're you know, already started. You're already in the top one percent. I mean, I'm just saying. Right. right. So what, what's the goal with running? Is to become a better runner. So what right is now that I'm mean? on a program just to be able to run longer distances or shorter distances faster or longer distances faster or really short distances really fast. <laughs> so you want to be everything. <laughs> just want to improve. No, no, but like what you're already running five, you can run five, eight miles, probably more uh, if you even tried. You're at 10 mile pace, probably better uh, if and when you try. What, what's, what's the smart goal, Jeremy? I'm just trying to hold you accountable to, to setting a specific running goal. Because it's the smart goal is, yes. I'll tell you, four three mile runs a week, keeping my heart rate at 135. Wow. That's a slow one, pace. Yeah. That's hard one, to do. One two mile run. So five runs total. Yes. With that, I'm pairing five days of strength training. Right. So and it's a training goal. It's not a running goal. It, it's, it's, yes. But it, the goal is this will help me become a better runner. By the For end sure. of June, I will be a better runner following this no, program. No, no question. No uh, question. Two active all day, off days where I'm stretching and foam rolling. And then, of course, the diet. I'm just dialing in the diet even more so, which I'm doing low carb, which I haven't done in a while. Yeah. And I do enjoy tracking to a degree. I took some time off from it, but I mean, I was tracking for, you know, four years straight, almost starting back in 2016. Right. So, like, I kind of missed that. So, I'm excited about that. I'm excited that, you know, I'll lose some fat. Not that, you know, I had a lot to lose, but it's fun, you know, because I did compete for a bodybuilding show a couple of years ago. So, I dialed it back then and that was fun. So, yeah, I mean, it's just great. Just enjoying the process. Yeah. And, and setting goals absolutely changes mindset. I mean, you, you put something on the calendar, you put a smart goal together where in 30 days or July 1st, I'm going to weigh this, or my percentage body fat is going to be that, or I want to beat my fastest mile by tens, whatever those smart goals are. Uh, journal every day, drink, you know, you know, a hundred ounces of water every day. So there's so many, uh, challenges that, that, that once created into a goal, it literally shifts mindset from I can't to I will. And that's what today's about. Yep. I will. I can. I will. I can. I'm doing it. Uh, that's, that's literally what today is all about. Um, so excited about, uh, you know, what, 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 what the topic is today is mindset, right? So uh, do you currently live in this fixed mindset of I can't, I shouldn't, and I'm already this and, and not one of personal growth or one of a growth mindset where, uh, you do want to get out of this fixed mindset where you do think it's possible and set a goal and start striving to it. No one's talking about perfection. No one's talking about anything. But um, but anyway, that's that's the quick summary of what, what we're about to talk about. Anything that you want to add before we dive? dive? Well, the title... And we haven't finalized it, but I think this is what it's going to be. It's unleashing your potential with a growth mindset. Unleashing your potential. I like that. And that's what it's all about. You choose where you want to live most of your time in your fixed mindset or your growth mindset. And we'll go over what the differences are. And if you live in your growth, well, you have a strong chance of unleashing your full potential. I think the best word in the, in that title is unleashing. Yeah. That's the point is that a fixed mindset, you're, you're leashed, you're leashed to that mindset. When you unleash, literally the sky's the, uh, the sky's the, um, 
what is it? The sky's the, the, sky's the limit. limit. There the are sky's no the limit. limits, right? There are no limits. Like literally, as soon as you get into a growth mindset, mindset, you're out of this mental jail. Yeah, that's it's, right. It's mental that's it. jail, mental funk, uh, mental. So, so let's talk about it. So let's talk about fixed mindset. Uh, what, give examples of a fixed mindset. Um, you want an example? Okay, I'll give you an example. I want, I want many examples. I'll, I'll, ju- because, I'll just give you because one. Because we don't know who's listening and we don't know what, what dot will connect. I'll just, so, I'll just give you one because there's endless accounts of this happening. Sure. And that's musicians. Yep. So mu- musicians, they, it, it takes work to be good at your craft, right? No doubt. And there's plenty of people out there that have the ability to be musicians because they loved instruments as a kid, as a young kid. So, you know, we take orchestra, we take band and a good amount of people, I don't know, 20% or so love it. So what's the difference between one that's successful and that you hear on the radio and one that you don't? And it's usually just the mindset. One is living in the fixed mindset. So let's say, you know, here I am, Jeremy, I'm, I'm playing, of the violin at a young age and I'm pretty decent at it, but all of a sudden they got hard. Okay. And they said, you know what? I can't do this. I can't be a musician. My parents said, you can't make any money being a musician. It's too hard. Um, all I hear anywhere is that it's like hitting it's the grind. lottery. You yeah. got to hit the lottery. There's right. no way you can do it. Boom. I have now developed a fixed mindset that I cannot be a musician. Let's say there's Eric. Eric is playing the drums. He loves it. His family is supporting him. He's going all in with this. He's just dedicating, playing the drums every day and getting better and better and better and better. He just loves it. He, 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 it's in his heart to do it. And he, do, he starts a band with his friends. And then next thing you know, they're, they're nir- top of the charts. They're nirvana. They're nirvana. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, still, still that, that, that dot for me connects with those that are musicians, maybe just not top musicians, uh, might have fixed mindset. But to me, uh, you know, just picking up an instrument and playing it and playing it well, and maybe not the top and going, uh, as far or whatever else, but that was, they had some growth mindset at some point. I mean... I know a lot of people that have never picked up an instrument. So, so there's definitely different levels of growth mindset, right? But let's, let's give more examples of fixed mindsets. Okay. Well, let's use my examples. So I was fixed for a while that I'm just going to be a professional poker player. You know, the money's good. You know, I win every year. I create my own schedule, you know, ultimately it's not what I want to do. I'm not helping anybody, but you know, what what else am I going to do? Like it's too late to start training, even though I love fitness and health and like been doing it my whole life. (laughs) It's just too late. Like, you know, I'm not going to do it. I got to, how am I going to start a business? First of all, like the capital, how's that? How am I going to come up with that? Like, there's just no way. And I had this mindset for years. For right. years, probably right. 10 years. Right. Okay. Then all of a sudden, I started developing a growth mindset. Mm-hmm. I realized I really don't have any limitations, that my mind is going to control exactly where I go. And I accepted that I was going to live from this day on in a growth mindset. Well, I mean, in a short period of, of two years, you know, I became a certified health coach, life coach, personal trainer. Um, we, we just talked about it. We're going over our clients. We're about to hit close to a hundred, uh, close to, we're about to hit a hundred clients. Uh, I think we're like six away and this is in a short period. We opened up two gyms, um, kitchen, you know, kitchen food, all of this stuff, all the things I wanted to do 10 years ago happened in a very short period. And many things that weren't even on the top of mind. Right. So, you know, why why would somebody why would somebody be in a fixed mindset 
I mean, that's a good question. And, and I think the answer is no one really wants to be in a fixed mindset. But uh, most are. So why? Because it's comfortable. It's very comfortable. But it's not it's comfortable. Easy, easy road out. But what but are used to it? You know, it's like you're driving, you're going the same way to work every single day. You know the route, you know the route. But if someone no, like for you poker, you know what I mean? For me it was, you know, uh drinking and overeating and it, I mean, it wasn't comfortable. It was it's it's not a life of comfort knowing deep down inside you need to change, you want to change, but you aren't willing to change, like you're not willing to take those steps. That's a shitty place to be again that mental jail the comfort is doing what you're used to doing i get that but what i'm saying is the mental jail is these thoughts right the comfort thoughts this is comfortable i'm okay this is what i want my life to be these are all just fixed mindset thoughts that the mind is having it's like it, it, it it's coming it's coming up with this excuse that eventually it doesn't even feel like an excuse more. It just feels a part of you. Fear is a big part of it. Oh, yeah. So, for years you didn't have this growth mindset or it wasn't coached on to you or, or, or you, you didn't flip the switch at, at some point. Um, you, were, you feared you were too old. You feared you didn't have enough money to do something, to, to start a business, et cetera. So it was just nonstop delusional fear, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, so fear of failure, I think, too, because I failed so many times at trying and, and, and again, not connecting dots on health, on career, on um, you know, working out again, a diet again, hiring a trainer again, and just this fear of failure. And, and like my wife and kids are just going to like laugh when they hear that I'm going to do this one more time. Um, that fear of failure is big mm -hmm. or starting a business. You know, I've, I've, again, I've, I've had a few businesses fail and it's, it's not great. But that fear of failure for a lot of people to start their business and start their dreams. Um, I, so I would say like, like knowledge, support, and fear. Yeah. No, fear is a big one. But the whole thing with fear of failure, you know, what exactly is failure? Like you failed, so you must have done something great, right? Or at least try to put yeah. some heart into it, right? Yes. How, what did you learn through all those failures? A lot. So did you fail? No. Are you alive? No, no, no. I mean, I, I don't consider anything that got me to where I am today a failure at all. That's it. Exactly. Um, so, at, at all. It was all exactly the plan in, in, in place to, to get us right where we're at right now. And that's an awesome place to be. Um, cause I mean, two years ago it was 180 degrees. Yeah. It was how, why did I get myself so, here? So how living, did I get myself here? So living in a growth mindset eliminates a majority of the fears. You're still going to have some, right? I mean, come on, we're human, but it eliminates the majority of fears, especially of failing because you understand that this is all about, this is all the, about the process of getting you where ultimately you're destined to go. You're, you're, I don't want to say final destination, but why you're here. You know, again, in prep for this uh, fear of judgment came. Why, why do we care what others think? Why, why do so many people? Because, because this, one, is, this is a big reason for a fixed mindset. Why, why does so many comes in because when humans first established tribes, that's where judgment came in because we had to fit into a society. Mm -hmm. Before, when we were just running around like cavemen, and before tribes, there was no judgment, right? We were more animals. Animals don't have judgment. One, one animal doesn't judge another one. But we came more advanced, and we developed tribes. So now, because of that, it's ingrained hundreds of thousands of years in us. 
Got it. But again, we know better. We know it doesn't matter what my neighbor thinks, what what even a lot of my friends think. What matters is what I think. And what matters is my, my I mean, that's the most important, but you know, my immediate family, et cetera, like that's, that's the most important. Uh, what, how does, how does one flip the switch on that? That's very hard. I mean, again, because we're so hardwired and, and we were going to talk about how this is, this is about the brain and the connections that the brain has from childhood and even before passed down for, you know, thousands and thousands of years. So to undo all of that requires jumping into the growth mindset and doing the work to stay in a growth mindset so your brain can rewire itself and get out of that judgment and fear and failure and all those negative hardwired emotions. That's a good answer because fixing other things and having that growth mindset does eliminate some of these I mean, obviously, they're mental and, and character defects that, that we have. Without even trying to fix that specific one, you fix others like yourself, like your mental health and, and physical health and so on. Suddenly, you do start worrying a lot less about what others think. You lose a lot of fear and, and anxieties. Um, so, so yeah, uh, again, we're working on yourself, which is growth mindset, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, why, why are we of the mentality? I mean, I, I can just picture my wife <laughs> saying this to me and you'll never change and you cannot change and, why why do we why do we as humans i mean i would have bet a lot of money that i wouldn't change and couldn't change i mean i now see it every day uh which is just walking miracles upon miracles because again three years ago two years ago i definitely of of, of not just having the mindset that no one can change like i was just confident I'm just like, no one changes. No one ever, like, you are who you are, um, uh, et cetera. And just the world I lived in, I guess nobody changed. But why, why is the world from the feeling that you are who you are and you cannot change? Well, you just said it right now. In the world that I lived in, no one changed. So because of that, no one changed. I mean, ultimately... Your mind is just a lens of how you're viewing your reality. All right. So you're living in a fixed lens. No one can change. So no one's going to change, including yourself. You don't think you can change? So if you don't think you could change, do you think someone else can change? Right. Probably not. Like, probably not. Okay. Right. And the funny thing is a lot of people actually expect others to change while they're not changing. So it's like, <laughs> look, come on. And then there's like this chaos right. going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's double chaos. For double sure. chaos. For sure. But if you live in the mindset of like, okay, like change is possible, right? And you know that now after years of putting in the work. Yes. Well, well now you know everybody can change. Yes. So you're, you're, you just took a total 180 shift. By working on yourself in the growth mindset. Right. Your reality now changed. Now you totally. know like millions of people can change. Totally. Millions. Millions. Yeah. I've seen it. I've heard it. I mean, it's... Okay. Last question on... On... Um, on, on this fixed mindset. Why is this decision to change so hard? And how does one make that decision to get to growth mindset? And then we'll talk about being in growth mindset in a minute, but talk about that. That So, I, yeah, I will say this. Chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you're already in a growth mindset. Now, at what rate are you going? Well, that's going to determine on 
how much you're working on, right? Are you setting goals? And we'll talk about like, I think there's like well, what, things what, what, that what? I coach on to do to live in a growth mindset. But ultimately, it's making the decision, being self-aware. And right. again, you can listen to the previous podcast to uh, listen about how we talked about self-awareness is the key. It's the flashlight that you're shining on your mind and you're seeing what's going on. So you see, okay, I'm fixed over here. I'm fixed in career, like I was. Okay? Right. I was fixed in career. I was not fixed in body. Mm -hmm. Like I always had confidence in that. I knew like I can change my body because of past experiences. So I went from small, skinny, short to in, within a couple of years, lots of muscles. So I was living in a growth mindset because I had the experiences and experiences are the key because experiences create beliefs. So you need to have more experiences to grow into a growth mindset. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to live in a growth mindset. No, you have to create the experiences. Right. Okay, so so what got you off the fence? It depends where we're looking at on the different areas. So we're your, your, your final, your final. My, okay, I'm done with poker. I'm gonna hire a life coach. What what triggered that? Well, what triggered that was a, an epiphany, an aha moment, a mystical experience, something that was you know. From a higher dimension happened to me okay talk about it and it, it was you know i was driving down to the casino and i was listening to a spiritual book and this part of the book hit me and i started getting emotional and i'm not an emotional person i wasn't an emotional person for 30 years and as i'm feeling these emotions this big truck truck drives by and says spirit right on the side Never seen the truck before, never seen the truck after. And as I see the sign, the, the truck, I'm hearing from my higher self or higher voice to sign up for health coach and life coach when I get to the casino. Just, just do it, Jeremy. Just sign up, register, and just do it. You'll, you'll coach part-time and play poker part-time. Got to the casino and signed up. After that, everything changed. It's amazing. Why were you listening to spiritual uh, tips in the car on the way? I was doing the work. I was, that was an experience I was allowing myself to have because I decided to live in a growth mindset. So I started my growth mindset. Obviously, growth mindset, again, probably started at a younger age with working out, but it, it, it progresses as we evolve and we have more self-awareness. We get into a growth mindset. So, so if, if, if you're 40, 50, 60 years old, you can't say it's too late because you've been in a growth mindset. You just got to allow yourself to keep growing and not stopping and allow you to have these experiences. But anyways, so when I had my other low mo moment in life, when I was going through a separation and tore my bicep, that was another moment I had where like, okay, I, I'm going to now dive into like research and listen to podcasts and really fix my health because I was overweight at the time. And then that's when I dove into keto and started working with that and counting calories and all that stuff. Right. So yeah, it's just start, start your growth mindset somewhere. Right. Started with your body, started with your mind, started with your, they're all connected at the end of the day, they're all connected. So professionally, I was always, um, from that growth mindset personally, you know, falling apart over the years, and literally decades of getting, you know, bigger and fatter, eating more, drinking more, stressing more, and enough was enough. And, and somehow, um, again, I, I, I talk about the, the fact that I watched the, the Bee Gees documentary and one brother died at 30 and one brother died at 40 and one brother died at 50. And literally making the decision that night and then running into you the next day like that's 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 inside so it also it was a, a spiritual because i let it happen yes uh, i let it happen i wanted it to happen it needed to happen and it happened mm -hmm. so so you know the rest is history you, you you know your life coached me along with personal training if you were just a personal trainer in some big gym that would have never worked for me uh, needed a lot of mind rewiring. Um, and you told me what to read. You told me what to journal about. And, and man, 
again, uh, saved my life at the time when I needed it and, and, and wanted it, which is the key. But uh, any other examples of, of maybe clients, um, fixed mindset to, 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 to them? Yeah, I mean, just just the mindset of even staying like more present and more understanding of all of the little accomplishments that you're doing. Like, okay, you're coming to the gym three times a week. Like, you've been journaling. Like, like you're you're living less now in the past in this depressive state, and you're more in the now and more grateful and just an overall happier person i mean you know even if it's just twice as happy right right uh i think we get a lot of clients like that i think we have a lot of clients like that you know we've had a couple clients that have also changed careers and have given up the right the the raise for 1.5 x of their income like that's a big raise if your body double like almost doubles yeah. And turning it down because they're realizing that that's not what's making me happy. This is what's making me happy. Right. That and it's not part of their purpose or who they are or who they want to be. Right. And yeah. having the, the courage to create the experiences, to step away. Like you can't just talk about it. You got to do it. Right. And the majority of our clients on a personal level without business are making that decision just by being here and, and, and signing up that we're where they also are starting to prioritize health and themselves first. The th yeah, the thing is it's all, even if it's just like a career shift, that could be 10, that could save 10 years of your life because it's all health related. Like if you're not aligned with what you're doing, it, it's gonna, it's gonna. And, and fixing big, important, um, things that clog your mindset could open up other ones, right? So like the career, if you're stuck in a really shitty, toxic environment job, that's going to prevent you from eating right and, and, and working out and, and being a better person, et cetera. Freeing yourself here could fix you here and vice versa. Coming into the gym and fixing your mindset and, and fixing your, your, your mind, body, and spirit, um, is all the difference that now you look at your job the, a different way, right? And your career and your position and how you interact with people. And, and uh, again, it clears your mind uh, to become more visionary as well. So fixing one thing while you're fixing another, I mean, yeah, Jeremy went all in and, and fixed career and, and, and personal at the same time. I did the same. But that's usually how it happens, though. It's, it's like you, you're all in this. Is, you know, you're this is the way that you're going to live. And things just happen at different times. Right. Like you might not fix all your relationships at once, but like you'll fix your, your mind and your body. All of a sudden, like the relationships start getting better. All, you know, so it's all. So, so so that's that's the biggest inspiration, I think, from this podcast is fixed mindset literally closes opportunities, literally closes the world to you to this fixed sick mindset i'm going to call it sick it's sick uh versus having this growth mindset now everything that you need and want is uh, the universe will start giving you with this open growth mindset so let's talk about that oh wait you had a quick mindset yes yeah, i have a quiz <laughs> i have a quiz for you eric so, so we thought it'd be a good idea if I just took the quiz uh, without without seeing it first, and you guys could take the quiz with us. But yeah, so read the questions, and if you want to share your answers, let's do it. So, so when I believe my abilities are fixed and cannot be changed. Okay, so so there's five possible choices for right. each one, right? So you're going to either strongly agree with the with the statement, disagree, you're neutral. You agree or strongly agree. Okay, so read the first one, please. I believe my abilities are fixed and cannot be changed. What do and you think? I couldn't, I, 
Is there a super strongly disagree? <laughs> so you want to take this now or, or Eric two years ago and compare? Well, I, I have a feeling my answers would just be 180 degrees. They might be uh, uh, opposite. Okay. So obviously today I strongly disagree that that I can change and fix things and they are in my abilities and I absolutely believe that. Number two, I tend to give up easily when faced with a difficult task. Um, I don't know if I'm a, of the uh, strongly disagree uh, mindset yet. So I would, I would just put disagree, disagree. Okay, but not strongly disagree, and I okay. got to work on that. Um, I see mistakes or failures as a reflection of my abilities. Hmm. I see mistakes. Well, this is this is more challenging than I thought. <laughs> okay, so I see mistakes or fail or failures as a reflection of my abilities. Again, I don't know if I'm on the strongly disagree yet. Uh, def disagree. Um, again, reflection of my failures. Um, I I just still feel um, that I could have, should have, you know, uh, done some of this stuff earlier and not needed decades of of debauchery and uh, to myself and and and, and so on. Um, Okay, so disagree there. But a reflection of my abilities, I feel anything's uh, possible. I can do anything, so I, I don't know. But it's somewhere in the disagree range. I believe that I can learn and grow through challenges and setbacks strongly. I mean, strong, uh, strongly agree. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I would say you can only learn the most from challenges and setbacks. And that's part of growth mindset is that is that feeling of perseverance mm -hmm. like you've, you've over accomplished something. I believe that my abilities and intelligence can improve with effort and practice. Strongly agree. I mean, abilities and intelligence with effort and practice. I mean, it's such a one on one question, I feel. But Okay, I often compare myself to others and feel envious of their success. Definitely needs work. Um, I don't know why that's still as important. I, I'm definitely down the scale on that, which, uh, you know, uh, you know, do, do I like nice things? Do I want nice things? Do I want nice things for myself and my family and, and for our business and whatever else? Um, so it needs work, but uh, I often compare myself to others and feel envious of their success. So I would put neutral or agree, unfortunately. So I couldn't put disagree. I'm definitely on the, okay. on the wrong side of, of this right now, still in my life, but still way better <laughs> than a lot more gratitude, a lot more everything else. All right. I tend to avoid challenges and difficult tasks. Um, I disagree on that. Again, uh, past life, just always kick the can down the road, always procrastinated. Um, I, I shouldn't say always, but the, the majority of the time um, where now as things come up, as people need help, as whatever else, uh, I'm right there. So it could be difficult. It could be out of my way. Um, I, I will, I will get it done. So I tend to avoid challenges. So I disagree. I'm not, I'm not at strongly disagree yet. I am open to feedback and criticism as an opportunity to improve. Lucky for me, I don't get criticism anymore. So no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, so strongly disagree on that one. <laughs> um, I am I am open to fit feedback criticism. Um, this is a tough one. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I'm more open than others. Is is my point? I I, um, I don't mind feedback and even crit criticism if done in a constructive way, for sure. Um, so as an opportunity for 
to improve, I would be somewhere in the agree or strongly agree. I would. I'll, I'll just give myself agree for now as a place to improve. Can I give you some feedback on that one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I so strongly disagree. <laughs> I tend to focus on the, this is the last question. Yep. I tend to focus on the outcome rather than the process and effort. Uh, I do. I agree, unfortunately. So I need to to get better at that. I need to, I put agree, um, but would love to get to disagree and strongly disagree. I am becoming more of that with family, uh, with my kids, with others. Uh, progress, you know, you'll, you'll hear it from me a lot. Uh, talk about progress, not perfection. I think results are the perfection. Um, but so focus on the process and effort rather than outcome. I think I'm better there with others and need to be better with myself mm -hmm. and our business. Okay. Thanks for taking that quiz. Now let's talk about it. <laughs> Ready? Let's talk about it. So number six, you said that you do agree that you compare yourself to others. How are we going to work on this here? I mean, gratitude, mm -hmm. right? It's the, it's the, hey, he just sold his business for $100 million and we're still a year and a half old baby. And when is that going to happen? And, but stopping to start thinking about that and and think more of you know how grateful i am that you know two years ago we didn't have a business and zero locations and zero clients and, and uh man uh, there's a lot of gratitude for the last year and a half um okay so are you going to make a gratitude list i've made one but that was a year and a half made ago one Okay. I made one. Right. No, no, but but that's part of my journaling. I, I name three, and a lot of the times it repeats, but I could make a new one without looking at my original one. May, it might be a good exercise. Okay, and when do you want to have this done by? And is this a list of 50 or 100? Okay, so, so list gratitude of 100 and by, by, by next Friday. Next Friday. Cool. I can't wait to do it and then compare it to the first one. That would be good. That would be good. <laughs> and, and the other, other, the other thing is, you know, you are still kind of living in the fixed mindset of that the outcome is more important than the process. So how are you going to work on this? Uh, honest, deep thought that came through my head was like, if Zero Dog Pub, for whatever reason, <laughs> didn't make it, yeah, I would enjoy the process, but like, again, it's just the mental... Are you having fun now? Oh my God. Recording this podcast? I am. What do you like about it? I think we're really good at it. I think these are really important topics to, to share and help others with. Um, I'm learning a lot, just preparing for them and doing them. Uh, again, you talk about uh, you know educating yourself and then once you start educating others is when it really starts sinking in. So a lot gets sunk, <laughs> synced in uh, while, we, while we create these podcasts. Um, And again, I think, I think we're good at it. I think we're helping others. Those that listen will definitely have value. Yeah. So you just, you just shifted your focus to the now. We're sitting here and doing this and, you know, helping others and everything is good. Yep. Right. There's no like things we have to worry about right now in this moment. You're shifting, you're shifting your focus here. Right. Versus. What's going to happen? What's the future? Right. Like what's podcast one hundred, Eric? Eric, what's podcast one hundred to be? Come on, and, man. It, and it's a total delusion. Like we need to know. And it's a total illusion, delusion. Like 
I'm just yeah. You you just you just fear and 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 worry about other things and and so again, I I just fast forward and throw myself in that future stance of if and if zero dog club would I say, but at least the process was good, right? So so that's where I still doubt myself, I guess. Um, Again, progress, not perfection. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to be as, as honest as, so as how possible. Are you gonna, uh, Authentic, but, so how are you going to work on having less fast forward? Yeah, be more present. Right? Be more present. present. How are you going to be more present? I mean, I meditate. I sauna. I work out every day. Um, so, okay. So that's your routine. You're going to do your routine. Do my routine. Okay. Um, journaling helps me stay present. I just need to pick up journaling. Pick up journaling to what? <laughs> why, did I, why did I put myself in my corner? How many days a month? So right now I do, um, I, I call them like accelerated journaling every day. Uh, but those are more of to-do lists and then some thoughts and some notes. Uh, but but sit down journaling, picking a topic and really getting what's off my mind. Um, I haven't done that in a while. Um, okay, would you like to start? I would like to start. Journaling stuff off your mind. Okay, let's, let's say 10 days before the end of the month. 10 journaling days. Before 10 that. journaling days. Okay, cool. Just send me a picture of those 10 at the end of the month. Okay. Okay, no problem. And, and we try. can retake the quiz in, in a couple months and see if anything changes. That's cool. Um, I literally thought I would just strongly disagree with everything and whatever else uh, on the quiz. This was good. This was good. And Again, th that's the whole point is to is to be super authentic and and uh, I mean with yourself, I get it that I'm I'm speaking in front of who knows who uh, listening and watching this, but but I, I am trying to live this authentic, honest life, like nothing to hide, uh, whatever else. A to help myself, B to help others, um, but. But again, that's that's where it starts with is that authenticity with yourself. Are you of a fixed mindset? Do you need to work on growth mindset? Which again, we think everyone does, and there's room for improvement with Jeremy, with me, with with everyone. Um, and um, and start taking action. So let's talk about that. So let's talk about. Let's talk strategies about strategies for shifting action. Taking action. Yeah, nothing happens without taking action. So let's meditate talk about all day long. It might be a little bit calmer, but uh, don't need to do stuff. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, awareness is the big part. Decision is the next big part. Uh, so that's two, and now we have eight. So that's ten things to, to, to do. But but awareness. The well, fact yeah, that you guys awareness, are watching. Awareness leads to all of this stuff, right? You, you you have to bring awareness, which again, it's like the the light, the flashlight onto your mind. Um, so there's eight strategies that I like to coach on. Number one is you want me to list them, or you want me to list number one and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a speed round, just because we're like forty. Nine minutes. Okay. okay. Let's so, so, so let's, let's just talk. Up. No, 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 no. Let's name them, and then we'll just sixty seconds on each thing, and then we're done in eight minutes. Okay. Number one, reframe negative thoughts. Okay. Two. So, so hold on. Oh, you want me to sixty seconds? Sixty seconds about it. I, I just think that's more constructive. Then we can summarize them at the end. I, I can even summarize it in less. Replace your negative thoughts with positive. And we have plenty of podcasts on that. Yes. So all of our mindset podcasts are all about reframing negative thoughts. We have a lot of them. I can't. I shouldn't. This guy sucks. This world sucks. Browns suck. Uh, 
Uh, uh, the, the, the weather, yeah, but yes, the weather sucks. Whatever else, and reframe into I can, I will, I should. How great is life? How beautiful is the weather? How beautiful that we're here. That's reframing negative thoughts, um, and that's a huge difference between between everything sucks in the world and it's fixed that way. To things don't have to be this way, and we can grow, and we can be bigger, better, etc. Next, next number two, practice mindfulness. How does one do that? And as silly as this sounds, we have to practice to be present because we're so much into the future, thinking about the past, whatever. We're like we're rarely ever present, and presence is the key, right? And so you got to practice it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, presence, uh, gratitude. Yep. Okay, next. So number three is you actually have to set learning goals. So if you want to live in the growth mindset and grow and learn, you have to set learning goals. So let's say you want to set a goal to read this amount of books by the end of the year. Right. Okay, set it. Break it down into how many books do you have to read a month and do it. Take notes. Yeah, and, and maybe even smaller goals like I will read a book in June. Right, like start with small goals. I will work out twice next week. I will count calories for the next week. I will, um, you know, walk ten thousand steps for the next week or two or month. Those are all super doable, uh, super accomplishable. And again, even if you hit a speed bump, it's no big deal. Just keep moving towards your goals. Next. Number four is you have to embrace challenges. Life is a school. In school, there's always challenges. So you have to embrace it. It's part of the game. It's part of the game that you're playing. You're, you're not going to be scared of challenges because you know that ultimately they're going to help you grow and you need to embrace that philosophy. 100%. Um, yeah. There are setbacks. There are setbacks to challenges. Uh, you're going to go to a wedding and eat wedding cake, and that's going to ruin your diet for a day. It doesn't mean anything. It literally means nothing in this, in this whole, whole uh, uh, world. But what's important is that your upgrowth mindset, that you've set goals, that you keep moving towards those goals, so you keep progressing and not regressing, even a step back. That's okay. You got two steps forward next week. Um, and that's, that's growth mindset. Next. Number five is seek feedback. And this is, again, very challenging for others, but it's important to go to others, trusted advisors, and do a reflection of, of you. Maybe, maybe you can pick up some stuff. Chances you will, you will pick up some stuff that you don't see. Your awareness is not the same as someone else's awareness. So it is important to seek others. And coaches, trainers, they help with that, right? So that's why you 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 get outside help, uh, especially as you go through a 90 day or 180 day mind, body, soul transformation. I'm just saying that feedback and, and mostly there's a lot of praise that happens, uh, but you will start getting feedback and more praise from friends, from family, and most importantly, from yourself, um, that I can't just how proud you are of yourself that you are putting one, st one, one foot in front of another and getting things done. Next. Number six, reflect on past experiences. So again, this is all about rewiring your brain. And in order to do that, you need to have experiences. So to solidify the rewiring, you need to go back and you need to reflect. So this is where journaling comes in. Self-reflection, contemplation, you need to practice, practice this daily. Jeremy is a pro. If you have any questions on any of that, please DM us. He's more than happy to answer your questions. Um, next. Practice self-compassion. Don't be so hard on yourselves. Like We have so many thoughts, 70,000 thoughts, and just be mindful of the way that you're speaking to yourself and the thoughts that you're having about yourself. Be gentle, be kind, because again, this is all about learning 
failing but not failing, learning, and moving on. And having fun. And having fun. It's yes. part of the game. It's part of the game. Okay, last. And number eight. number eight is, I mean, if you live in this mindset, then you are going to be fearless and you are going to do amazing things for the world. And that's embrace failure. Because with every failure, we 10x our growth. It's great. So, embrace failure. Embrace it. And that's the thing, the, this pra practicing self-compassion and embracing failure. Like, don't be at over analytical of yourself and don't don't take everything so seriously. Like, like as long as you're, again, moving in that right direction, you're 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 now loving this challenge uh, or your next challenge. That's the mindset that you want to go into. Not a, I'm not going to do something, but I love the fact that I'm doing it uh, again the, in the movie Air, uh, it talked about running, and and it's not about the finish line; it's about the fact that you're even running is uh, amazing. Same thing with life, and same thing with all these challenges and being in this growth mindset. The fact that you're doing it and in this growth mindset is the finish line. Yes, sir. And new finish lines get created out of nowhere that you never even thought was a finish line. Um, anything else you want to leave every, any, every, everyone with? Nope. As always, you know, if um, you like what you're hearing and you want to talk about any of this or potentially get some help for eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is, um, you know, I've helped a lot of people just through working through all this stuff in a short period. Uh, reach out. Feel free to reach out. That's what I'm going to say. I want to end it with the best stories, the best, most amazing, emotional stories that you hear about people changing and transforming and new careers and new bodies and new challenges and new whatever else. It's all about going from how they somehow got out of fixed mindsets into growth mindsets, right? Those are the best stories. Uh, so build your story. Your story doesn't matter how many years uh, you, you didn't do it. Jeremy was a poker player for 15 years. And, and, and again, it took him 10 or 10 years plus to make that decision. I was 20 plus years of, of, of <laughs> debauchery, <laughs> de debauchery but, but again, like you said, I, I was in the future, in the past, never present. Uh, so just lo lost negative soul health-wise, uh, et cetera. So get out of it. it. It can be done. We're literally living proof. We have 50 other clients right now that are living other proof. Um, I and it's it's very possible, and we're here to help. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Take care. Thank you.